why don't we take a few moments to do this? Um, in order to find the critical values, I need to calculate where the derivative is equal to zero. So let me calculate the derivative first. I cut the derivative of f of x. I got to bring the power down. So this becomes three times one third, which is just one. I subtract one from the exponent, that's x squared. And then I got minus five halves times two is just minus five. And I, add, I subtract one from the exponent, so that gives you a one. And then this is a constant multiple, right? The four stays there. The derivative of x to the one is one times x to the zero, which is one. So this is just plus four. Is there any questions about that? Oh, sorry, I saw a question. There's a question at 10.15, Terry asks, so absolute min does not go below the x-axis? It can go below the x-axis, Terry. I mean, look at this, the absolute min over here is below the x-axis. So the absolute min is just the lowest y value, whether it's above or below. Yeah, all right, good. So um, so now we've taken our derivative. We kind of need to be able to take derivatives and antiderivatives seamlessly uh, because a lot of you are learning it for the first time. Sometimes you mix it up and it's fine. I mean, you just got to practice, but Every once in a while, I'll be grading like an integration quiz. And all of a sudden, a student will mix up taking an antiderivative and a derivative. So you need to just be careful. Um, just comes with practice like anything else. Now that I have this uh, first derivative, if I want to find the critical points, I need to set it equal to 0. And I need to factor, right? So. Um, so if I factor this guy, this would be x minus 4, x minus 1. My habit is if I'm looking for critical values, I'll call the critical value c. So I'll do something like this. And then this tells me that c is equal to 1 and c is equal to 4. So in this case, we have uh, two critical values. Does that make sense? Is there any questions? One of the things that we're gonna do is we're gonna learn that, this is in 3.4, we're gonna learn that when you have functions like this, this polynomials, the leading term dominates. So that means as you go off to infinity, it basically has the same shape as x to the third power. So x to the third kind of looks like this, but because this guy has all these other terms over here, it's not going to be the straight x cubed graph that you might be used to seeing. So I think this graph looks something like this, something along the lines like this. And I bet that you know this value here is one and this value here is four, because I know the general shape of the cubic, and I know that it's going to have a hump here and a hump here. So you can tell that just by looking at the leading term and then realizing, oh, if it has a couple bumps, then those points will be where the critical values are. Okay. So our ultimate goal is in section 3.5 is to take some function like this and be able to graph it accurately using calculus. And then you'll be able to, to figure out it looks something like that. That's kind of where we're going, 3, 1, 3, 3, 3, 4, and 3, 5. Okay. Um, maybe you should try B, just try that real quick. So take the derivative and find the critical values. And then, um, let me give you a couple minutes to do that. I'll set a timer on my clock and then I'll check in with you.
All right. I don't. I don't know if that's enough time, but let's play three, two, one, go. Type your critical values in the chat box. And then I'll I'll count it down, and hopefully we all have the right answer. And if we don't, we can figure out what it is in five seconds. Ready? Three, two, one, go. All right, I have three people that responded. So is it clear what rule I need to use to take the derivative of this guy? What rule do I need? Product rule, quotient rule, chain rule. Chain rule is correct, James. So you gotta take the derivative of the outside function. The derivative of the outside function is three times something squared. You gotta keep the inside. That's x squared minus one. You gotta multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside is gonna be times two x. Is there any questions about that? Next. We need to factor x squared minus one. This is a classic difference of two squares. So it's gonna give you x minus one times x plus one, right? But because I have the square there, I got to square each factor. And then you got times two x. It seems weird not to combine the three and the two together. So let me write it as six x times x minus one squared times x minus x plus one squared like this. Now I want to set it equal to zero and I'm going to change all those x's to c's. So uh, you don't have to do that. I just, not even sure why I do it. I think it became a habit at some point. Um, c stands for critical value. So, I hope we can see that we get C equal to zero, C equal to one, and C equal to negative one. Does that make sense? Is there any questions about that? All right. Sometimes um, students don't want to contribute an answer because they're afraid of looking stupid or making a mistake, but to be honest, when you make a mistake in public, you learn the lesson much better. So I guess I'm encouraging, I'm encouraging that. Uh, but I understand socially, it's, it's not easy. No one wants to look dumb or foolish. It's very freeing once you get over that, once you get over your cool complex and you're just kind of open. You make mistakes, you learn from mistakes, and it's all good. Um, but maybe I think differently than others. Let's calculate h prime next. I hope we all can see we need a quotient rule. The derivative of the top is going to be 4. We keep the bottom, which is 1 plus x squared minus. Got to take the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of the bottom is 2x. You got to keep the top, which is 4x. All over the bottom squared. Bottom squared is one plus x squared, quantity squared. This bottom part, it's always positive, right? It's never gonna be zero. So, when I'm looking for critical values, I'm care, I care about two things. The first thing I care about is f prime is, of x is equal to zero, and that's setting the numerator equal to zero. The second thing, and, and I'm gonna do that first. So I started talking about the bottom first, but let me talk about the top first. So when I set the numerator equal to the zero, what do I get? I'm gonna get zero is equal to four plus four x squared, minus 8x squared, right? And this gives me 0 is equal to 4 minus 4x four squared. 
which is the same thing as uh, four times one minus X squared. I think we just looked at this. So that's the same thing as saying zero is equal to four times one minus C and one plus C. So we're gonna get, this tells you that C is equal to one and negative one. So those two are definitely critical points. But the second thing we want to talk about, and this is where, remember I said, I mentioned this always positive part too early. It's just, that's the first thing I notice. But the second thing that we want to check is that, um, H prime of X does not exist when your denominator is equal to zero. But we noticed that uh, one plus X squared is always greater than zero. So when you square it, it's still gonna be greater than zero. So that never happens, okay? So all we really have is really just have two critical values here. There's no points where F prime does not exist. I'm gonna move this slightly so then you don't think it's part of some other problem. Maybe I'll put like a little fence thing and make a green fence, like so. Like this, okay, this is all part of part C. Okay. 